Now, the state government is going all out to increase the supply of homes. However, these could come at a price. The government has proposed a hike in FSI, but builders will have to pay a premium to use this FSI. What does this mean for the Mumbai home buyer? My colleague Disha Shah spent the day speaking to developers and market experts and got us this report. Take a look. The state government has issued a final notification hiking additional development rights and premium charge to mop up more revenue. It has proposed to hike incentive FSI which is optional for the city's suburbs from 0.33 to 0.50. Let me tell you that FSI is an indicator of how high a developer can build on a plot, the ratio of the total constructed area to the size of the plot. An important thing to remember here is that once this proposal is out, this additional FSI will come at a cost. And if a developer wants to avail this extra FSI, the dev he has to pay a premium of 60%, uh, which is according to the current ready reckoner rates. And with this proposal, the state government plans to mop up revenue close to 3,000 to 4,000 crore rupees. And the premium received by the developer will be shared equally by the state government and the civic body. Another important thing to remember here is that if this proposal passes, this could also lead to increase in the uh, transfer of development rights certificate. When we spoke to developers, they were quite not happy with this proposal. They said that this will jack up project cost and the selling rates could also go up, which at the end, the end user will have to pay for. But on the other hand, when we spoke to experts, they believe that this is a very good thing uh, for the city like Mumbai because extra FSI means a developer will have more area to sell. And if more area to sell, that means more homes for you and me. So we have to wait and watch that what the final notification actually comes out to be. And to take that further, we have uh, Rohit Podar, Managing Director of uh, Podar Developers, joining us live here on the news on Magic Mix Now. Rohit, thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us. Uh, talk to us. The government is proposing to hike uh, you know, the incentive FSI. What is uh, going to be the likely impact of it all? The government wants to have housing for all by 2022. And uh, several people in the government are of the opinion that the property prices are unaffordable and they, the prices should actually come down across the board. If this is our premise, then um, the policy is a good policy of increasing the FSI, but any increase in FSI should be linked to market forces as to whether it's affordable or not. If it's not linked to market forces, then it's only an exercise on a piece of paper without having the necessary effect. And in this particular case, it seems to have a vastly negative effect. Now it's 60 basically of a much larger figure so there's a six or seven time increase basically in the in the charges. Uh, so this is point number one. So who will ultimately pay for this? The customer, if if it's affordable for them to pay. So this is not, of course, in uh, you know in symbiosis with the idea of bringing prices down. Okay, Rohit, uh, but the proposal also says that to avail that extra FSI, developers will have to pay that sixty percent premium uh, you were talking about. So are developers first of all willing to pay? I mean, in theory, everyone likes extra FSI. The question becomes, what are the cost parameters that cost that go up into making your, your cost of goods or cost of material, or in this case, the cost of an apartment. If the cost of an apartment is more than the selling price of the flat, then no one's going to basically be interested in the scheme. So as things stand today, I don't think that the scheme is going to, to generate any large revenue whatsoever. So my personal view is that instead of 60%, they should either make it 30% or they should put a cap or a ceiling zone wise they can they can maybe map so maybe map out five areas of mumbai and have five different zones with five caps of uh, maximum price of revenue which is say two three thousand rupees a square foot all right uh, rohit uh, before i let you go you know my colleague disha was just uh, talking about how this could also lead to increase in the transfer of uh, development rights uh, you tell us what will be the impact uh, this will have on the tdr market the TDR lobby is having a field day. They think that there's been a home run of home runs, the Diwali of all Diwalis, the Bonanza of all Bonanzas. And the reason is that they, they are now linking their TDR prices to the 60% of ready reckoner price. So in many cases, TDR prices have gone up 200-300%. As a consequence of that, in many areas like Bhandu, for example, the input costs are higher than the output costs. So if the selling price is going to be less than the, the, the manufacturing cost or your total costs, how will uh, housing stock come into the market and how will prices come down? But basically my view is that 
whatever schemes are proposed by the government should be practically be executable by people who, who will take the schemes and the tax net should be as wide as possible. So I would say less is more. The lower the rates of taxes, the lower the rates of revenue expectation, the, the wider will be the collection. All right, uh, Rohit, uh, we will uh, let it go with that. Thank you so much for uh, uh, joining us here on the news on uh, Magic Bricks. Now, on one hand, where developers believe that this will jack up the project's costs there, uh, but let's get an expert's view also on this proposal. And for that, we are being joined on the phone line by Pankaj Kapoor, Managing Director of Les Fora. Thank you so much for joining us here, Pankaj. Uh, my first question to you is simple. There could be a hike in incentive FSI. What impact will this have on Mumbai's property market? You know, one thing is that increase in FSI is always good for the city like Mumbai. If you look at a built-up area density, we have the highest built-up area density. That means that we have more people and very less built-up area. So if you look at uh, Mumbai to accommodate number of people who are living and to provide the housing for the people, we need to have close to 4.5 FSI. And this is analysis we did some time back. And that's why you look at last two years or three years, government has been coming forward increasing FSI by whether it is in the redevelopment projects or whether it is in the uh, land projects and things like it. The FSI has been towards the rise. So one good thing is the increase in FSI. I do agree uh, the point which, um, uh, you know, Podarji was mentioning that uh, the ready reckoner prices itself is so high today. And la from 2009, ever since the ready reckoner prices started surging and the, since the government has linked the premium charges to the ready reckoner land prices charges and which they have been increasing the outgo of the developers by virtue of paying to these uh, you know cost towards the approval and the fungible fsi has grown up by close to 400% thanks god like this this year they have restricted increasing uh, any further to the ready reckoner prices but the the you know the damage was already done by the government and that is where they have not realized whether the market is in the slums uh, uh, there could be a speculative prices which the builders have really uh, adopted and the prices went up but the government also went ahead and matching the prevailing prices with their ready reckoner prices it has it has created a double whammy it has virtually created the uh, the you know kind of a floor that the developer can't reduce the prices along with that it has also impacted their cost so i agree that point of view that the the cost of the developer has grown gone up because of the increase in 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 the yes, prices but yeah but you know additional fsi also provides additional uh, sellable area so uh, in that sense it is good, but, uh, uh, you know... Uh, no, Pankaj, has... the one thing I want to ask you is, is the increase in FSI, you know, so this will not, uh, you know, um, have any effect or will not be beneficial uh, for the home buyer? You know, beneficial uh, increase in FSI, if it helps in reducing the land cost and the cost of the people, then builder have a scope for reducing the rates and uh, moderating the prices, and then they will start passing the discounts to the people. And that is where we see the sales will improve. That is what is not happening. So when the government in past four years, the way they increased the prices and they brought it at par with the market rate, which are unproductive rates, sales are not happening. So and 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 you know, every FSI is coming equivalent to the prevailing land prices, and land prices itself is unproductive. So it's like it's a it's a you know why the developers are not happy? Because they know at current price point things are not selling. They are looking at the avenues and and the and the scope by virtue of it. They are able to moderate the their their prices, land prices. So FSI is 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 a component through which you increase the productivity of. Hmm. It. But if you are increasing the productivity and saying right. that along with increased productivity, right. the charges is also the same that the impact gets nullified. So they impact gets I nullified. That's the word uh, coming in from Pankaj Kapoor, uh, Managing Director of Lyasef Fora. Thank you so much for joining us live here on the news on Magic Prishnan.